Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand. Welcome to another video. I'm afraid to say that there have been some very recent serious fraud accusations against an article on dementia that was published a few years ago and led a whole field of research. Dementia is an absolutely terrible illness. I see this every day in my job as a physician. It's horrible for the patient and exerts a huge toll on the family as well. So it's important if we're doing research in this field that it is based on honest scientific studies. But alas, this isn't the case with what I'm about to share with you here. So this was published in the Daily Mail, which is a UK-based publication. Seminal Alzheimer's study claiming memory-robbing disease was caused by buildup of protein in brain may have been manipulated, damning investigation claims. Images used to prove a protein is behind Alzheimer's may have been tampered. Forensic imaging experts say they appear doctored to better fit a hypothesis. Seminal paper was used as starting point for billions of pounds of research. Wow, that is quite a series of accusations. Let's dive in. The data behind the most influential theory of what causes Alzheimer's disease may have been manipulated, a damning scientific probe has claimed. Experts fear the allegedly falsified results have misled research over the last 16 years, potentially wasting billions of pounds of funding. A six-month investigation by Science, considered one of the world's most respected research journals, uncovered shockingly blatant tampering of results in the seminal 2006 University of Minnesota study. So as always, if you're ever reading an article like this and you read about a study which was published or an article, always go to the actual article itself as well and read that. So here it is. So this is in Science, which is a very well-respected journal. Blots on a field. A neuroscience image sleuth finds signs of fabrication in scores of Alzheimer's articles threatening a reigning theory of the disease. And this is an excellent article. It goes through the whole story of exactly what happened. I put the link down below and, of course, again, encourage you to read it. And I want to highlight one particular paragraph in the article. The Nature paper has been cited in about 2,300 scholarly articles, more than all but four other Alzheimer's basic research reports published since 2006, according to the Web of Science database. Since then, annual NIH support for studies labeled amyloid, oligoma, and Alzheimer's has risen from near zero to $287 million in 2021. So in the interest of time and being concise, I'm going to go back to that Daily Mail piece and let's see what exactly this fabrication was all about. The paper pointed to a particular protein known as amyloid beta as the driving force behind Alzheimer's. It was the first substance in brain tissue ever identified that seemed to be behind the condition's memory-robbing effects. Published in rival journal Nature, the study became one of the most cited articles on Alzheimer's ever published. So we know whenever there's an article with that much weight put behind it, that tons and tons of money is thrown into research. And that is exactly what subsequently happened. Around £1.3 billion, that's $1.6 billion of funding for studies mentioning amyloids was spent by the US government over the last year alone. It made up half of the country's total Alzheimer's research funding. But images from the study, which involved injecting mice with the protein, appear to be doctored to better fit a hypothesis, according to a forensic image consultant who was asked to review the data. Charities today slammed the extremely serious allegations, but they insisted the theory itself still stands because decades worth of research has pinpointed other amyloid proteins as being to blame. Even if the original results were falsified, one top expert claimed, we definitely would not need to throw the baby out with the bath water. This is still of course a very serious allegation but that is a good point. So the article then goes on to quote the views of other experts who are raising suspicions and concerns about this potential fraud. Here's a quote, they had the potential to mislead an entire field of research. There is strong support for these suspicions. The data might have been changed to better fit a hypothesis. There are at least 12 or 15 images where I would agree there is no other explanation than manipulation. A University of Minnesota spokesman said in response to the allegations, the university will follow its processes to review the questions any claims have raised. Stories like this, as disappointing as they are, are no surprise to me whatsoever. We hear more and more such similar stories about data manipulation, falsification in our field. 
It is awful, but it's something that my eyes have been open to much more recently. And I call this the corruption of medicine and science. A field which is supposed to be very pure indeed is often not pure by any stretch of the imagination. This doesn't mean that most people who are in our field are guided by the wrong intentions and have the wrong motivations. I would say the vast majority of people within science and medicine are honest. They want to do the right thing, they want to get to the truth, and they have good intentions. However, we have some very bad actors indeed, and often these actors are in positions of power and influence. Whatever their motives are, whether they are for fame, prestige, they want to get their name out there on a publication, and of course, money, we cannot forget money being a primary motivation in so many cases. There is a famous phrase, 90% plus of scientists will always agree with whoever is funding them. We have a big problem, and I think we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg with stories such as this. Looking at it from the broader perspective of what is wise and what is foolish, imagine basing a whole field of research on one particular study. Seems rather foolish, doesn't it? But that is something that, again, we see occur repeatedly within our field. You'd think people who call themselves scientists and doctors wouldn't be so silly as to do that. They would want more evidence before they throw billions and billions of dollars and pounds into a field of research. You wouldn't want to do it on the basis of only one study result, but we've seen that happen time and time again. Combine this with the fact that we have a media out there, a corporate mainstream media, that doesn't do its job. Journalists, when they see pieces of research, do not ask questions. They don't have people who will truly tear apart studies and represent a broad range of opinions. They don't do that. So we cannot expect, when study results emerge, the media to be questioning at all. They do not do their job. Coming back to this issue then, this particular study, we're talking about dementia, an illness which is truly terrible, exerts a terrible toll on the patient and their families, and we may have had for years and years so much money and many resources thrown into an area of research that was based on falsified data. That should be a concern to everybody within our field. I am passionate about real medicine and science, at its best, you cannot beat this field, but it has to be done properly, and we have to have honesty. And if studies out there are being manipulated and falsified, and then the entire scientific community is throwing their weight behind only one particular study, that's a huge problem indeed. And it makes you ask the natural next question, what else out there is potentially corrupted and falsified? We deserve to know. Nothing less than full transparency transparency and honesty is the right way forward in science and medicine. Thanks everybody for listening, Dr. Sunil Dand. Do let me know your thoughts down below. If you like this video, do hit the subscribe button. Also come follow me on my uncensored platform, locals.com, where we have more open, honest discussions in a less censored, less constrained environment. That link is down below, as is the link to my newsletter. We will speak again very soon.